we'll start it off here in maybe 27. Um, Uh, we're just going to look into a few stories tonight about, uh, if you're making a title of this talk, uh, it's called uh, A Sleepless Night. Um, it's, um, it's amazing to, um, uh, to look through some stories uh, in the Bible uh, where people have, um, have gone through something and uh, perhaps uh, uh, they uh, they go through some form of trouble. Um, maybe perhaps they've done something wrong, and um, and something got them. And uh, uh, we see that um, life uh, become very restless. And um, it's also some of the other principle of people that actually have um, have not really a. Their life is not really functioned the way it should be uh, because um, uh, whatever they, they've actually decided to, uh, to do in life and it stopped them of looking to God. In other words, they become in action or out of action uh, because something has actually uh, taken control of their life. In May 27, uh, this is just uh, coming to the end of the life of uh, Jesus. I think we read this the other day. And um, he talks about here, we pick it up in verse, a couple of verses. Uh, Jesus was just actually in front of, uh, in front of a huge uh, crowd of people. And uh, because they were pushing, uh, they were pushing uh, Paul's. Um, you know, obviously, we know the story that, uh, that the false accusation against him, and they were accused him uh, of so many things. And uh, here, uh, it was a big decision for Pilate uh, to say uh, what has to be done. Uh, but we know that something interesting happened overnight uh, through his wife. And he says here, and you pick it up in, uh, in verse 16. Uh, verse 17, rather, he says, Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will he that I release unto you? Uh, Barabbas, or Jesus, which is called Christ, uh, for, for he knew that for envy they had uh, delivered him. And when he was set down in the judgment seat, this is uh, Pilate, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with the just men? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. Um, there's a record in the, another translation of the Bible. Um, it, uh, it talks about that she was very painful. And uh, we see here just a little record of, uh, of his wife. Uh, doesn't seem to have a, a decent sleep overnight. And uh, thinking over something. And uh, it comes to a conclusion that she knew that um, uh, that Jesus was uh, was uh, was a just man. He wasn't he wasn't um, guilty of anything at all. He wasn't uh, worthy of death because he was the son of the living God. Uh, there was no fault uh, found uh, for him or against him or anything like that, as we see here. But the impact here was was uh, was something that um, that he act she actually experienced overnight and uh, he actually comes out to the answer uh, to the husband and I'm sure something that Pilate would have actually also think uh, think uh, you know over it over and over again think about what he should be doing and he goes on to say that he uh, washes his hand he doesn't want to be involved over it uh, but um, it's very clear here. This is this would be one of one of the historical sleepless nights in history of men. You know that somebody like a such seeing something tremendous, something that perhaps he never dreamt about, something that she hasn't actually uh, that she actually actually experienced in life, that she saw something that it was true, and leads her. Uh, to the husband not to 
put Jesus Christ uh, on the cross. And um, the thing with the sleeping um, it's very important that you that all human beings have to have a decent sleep. And um, that says about um, if you if you don't have enough sleep, uh, it's not good for your body, and uh, it's dysfunction your body. Your uh, your mind is not at rest. Um, you know your uh, your attention is not it's not straight either. And uh, you know it's it's actually also bring us a high risk of uh, uh, all sorts of ma major sicknesses. You know talking about cancer or uh, depression, uh, it, 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 it leads to that. Uh, but the thing with sleepless nights and the lack of sleep, it, uh, what it does is it, if something is going on in people's life, it leads to that. It also brings, uh, you, know, um, uh, you know, unhealthy and uh, everything doesn't go the way it is. And we, we, we as human beings, uh, we should make sure that we look after this body, you know, because this body is just a natural body. It's not, uh, uh, we're not robots. We're not uh, make up out of metals or anything like that. Uh, we just flesh and blood and we have to look after also our body as we live in this earth. Uh, but uh, I think uh, too much mankind have actually abused this body. You know, you work through your whole life five days a week. And then uh, over the weekend, uh, mankind tend to chill out, uh, staying late overnight, watching a movie or whatever. But it's actually the time where you should be resting your body. You know, and because God created us like that. Um, but I think one of the biggest problem now is, is, is people going through something, they're hit by something, or perhaps they worry too much about something. Perhaps they got a big bills, or something got them, and it leads up to this in, in this state of, of, of trouble. And uh, if we go to Genesis uh, chapter forty-one, Genesis forty-one, we look into the story of Pharaoh. Pharaoh also had a, a very bad experience, and uh, perhaps this is. Um, um, this, this is one of the worst times of his life. You know, we're thinking about Pharaoh, king of Egypt, well-known king, you know, in the history of the Egyptian kingdom. And um, Pharaoh here had a dream. And uh, as I said, this is one of the worst ever time of his life. And he was troubled big time. Um, in verse, uh, Genesis 41, we pick it up in verse... Uh, um, verse 7. He says in the um, he says in the seven thin years devoured the seven rank of the full years, and Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for all the uh, magicians of, of Egypt and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dream, but there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Then spake the chief uh, butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Now, it's, um, it's, it's something that Pharaoh wasn't actually expecting to, uh, to have. And, uh, and obviously, this is also the time of Joseph. Joseph was a well-known uh, person. And... Um, he was, uh, he was actually in prison on the time. And uh, so Pharaoh had, had got this, had something have actually got him overnight and, and uh, perhaps uh, he couldn't actually sleep for what he actually saw. And he worries him a lot. He become restless and unsettled with an issue, with this issue that he had, this, this, uh, this, uh, this thing that he saw. And uh, perhaps in his mind, he was thinking about the future of his kingdom. Perhaps as a king, you know, uh, trying to do his very best for the safety of his people. And uh, he got something, you know, this is, is something that, um, that really got him. And the Bible says that he was troubled. And, and in fact, he goes on to say that he got all these uh, experts. He got his experts. He's seeking out for help, seeking out for advice. 
He's seeking out for revelation. He's seeking out for peace. He's seeking out for answers. He's seeking out for all the things he could for the best of his, the best of his, best of his ability. But he just couldn't give him the answer. His life was not pleasant at all. There was something going on through his whole life. And I'm pretty certain there would be this particular time the people stand alongside him, the army, the soldiers, the governor, and the things that goes together, they would have still saw his life as a mess because something got him. It's, it's like, uh, you know, imagine, you know, imagine if you were a policeman, you're dealing with an investigation, you're investigating a particular matter in a local community and you approach a couple of people to give an evidence of what's actually involved on that particular on the time. And, uh, you know, people talk to you as a policeman and, you, and, and you, you just hear the way they say things or the way they came to you to give you some form of information and it doesn't make sense until you come to the right person and then you get your uh, information right and matches up your investigation what you're trying to get or to tackle. And Pharaoh was like that. Pharaoh was reaching out for experts he was reaching out for well-known people in the history of Egypt and he couldn't get his answer because there was something that really consumed his life. He actually bring him down. It's, it, you know, it's, it's actually, you know, if you think about this particular experience here, it's just not a nice place to be, isn't it? Not having a good night's sleep, not really a good environment. You know, uh, nowadays people try to take all sorts of medication, try to calm them down or to stop this depression or whatever might be. You know, in the modern society we're living on now, they take this medication, if this medication doesn't work, they go to the other medication, if this doesn't work, they go to this, they go, they go to all sorts of places. You know, life is just coming down. Whatever that they actually got in their life is just training their life or hold their life completely. And then Joseph appeared and he gave, gave him the interpretation. He was at peace. He was at rest. That bad experience, that trouble that he had was actually flying over his head. That was a revelation. And it's very, it's very different to deal with something to do with, when you something to do with God, it's always different. And uh, Pharaoh had, a, had an experience. And uh, likewise, also, uh, uh, we can also learn and see things from there. Now we go to uh, Jonah, chapter 1. Jonah, chapter 1. The story of Jonah, just another example. There's a lot of stories in the Bible where people had sleepless nights. Yeah. Well, we're familiar with the story of Jonah, but it's the story that we, um, not just to sort of go past it, but I think it's, uh, it's vital that we, we engage with all these minor prophet stories. You know, uh, I mean, we might see, oh, it's only whole three chapters, but one chapter, one sentence of the word of God, it can demand something huge. Just one, one little word in the word of God can give us a huge impact. And uh, here, the book of Jonah, you know, Jonah was actually got given a commission. And uh, we turn, uh, we make a U-turn. And he decided to do a runner. And uh, he knew what, what his role were and what he should be doing. To actually pleasing the Lord and, and uh, also to... Uh, uh, just to keep his life uh, safe, you know, in, in, in the world that he was living and likewise in the world we're living. It's the same world, though. Um, uh, here, John, in chapter 1, uh, just um, right in the very last verse, he says, Now the Lord, in verse 17, Now the Lord appeared, the great fish, to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. That is just um, very different. You know, I mean, uh, living, living inside uh, this big giant fish, uh, a fish rather, uh, it, it's, 
I mean, how, how Jonah can actually survive that? I mean, obviously, um, and I reckon, uh, you know, you can actually survive without food for three days and three nights, I think. But if you go longer than that, and then obviously um, people will turn out to look like uh, they lost quite a lot of uh, uh, things in their body. And, uh, you know, um, you can tell that uh, people are not actually um, eating because you start seeing their bones sticking out through their muscles. It's very common now in, in countries like in the some parts of Africa where they still have vermin, you know, uh, not having food for at least quite a number of days, you will see, you will see the uh, bo bones in our bodies start shaping up. And, uh, and I reckon Jonah was like that, you know, after three days. Um, but uh, it was actually a very worrying situation, you know, and uh, but in the next chapter, he talks about then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish belly and said, I cried by the reason of my affliction into the Lord. And, uh, and he heard me out of the belly of hell, cried, and I thought, how does my voice? So it sounds like he was actually in a point of death. Now, the word hell here is relating to the grave. You know, he was actually in a point of his death. He was dying in his dying situation. You know, if one of the you know, one of the, perhaps one of the ugliest experiences that Jonah the prophet would have come through. It was a very nasty experience that he had, but it wasn't something to do with the Ninevites. It wasn't something with the people who were bought with in the boat. It was, it was him. He was the problem. He decided to make the wrong move. And then uh, he didn't have, a, he didn't have a really nice three days, three nights in the in, in the fish, but now he's actually acknowledging what he did was wrong, uh, right in the point of his death. He says in verse 3, For thou hast come into the deep in the midst of the sea, and the floods come past me about, and the billows of thy waves pass over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy, of thy sight, yet I will look again towards the holy temple. The waters come past me by even to the soul, and death caused me a run about in the which were wrapped about my head. And I went down to the bottom to the mountain and the earth with the bars about me forever. Yes, as thou brought me up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. And when my soul fainted within, I remember the Lord, and my prayer came into thee, into thy holy temple. Then they observed the living vanities, forsake thy own mercy. But I will sacrifice unto thee the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that I have vowed salvation is of the Lord. And uh, Jonah have actually acknowledged that what he did was wrong. And it sounds like that he was saying, I don't want to have that bad experience again anymore. I don't want to disobey the Lord anymore. I don't want to have a sleepless night anymore again. I don't want to keep thinking about my, my, my uh, you know, my uh, uh, problems. I don't want to keep dwelling on those things that comes around me daily. I want to be with the Lord. I want to be at peace with God. And uh, he's actually acknowledged clearly that life in the Lord is always passing. Life in the Lord is always peaceful. And, uh, and Jonah was, you know, was one of the examples. He had actually acknowledged that the, the move that he made was completely wrong. It was motivated by, by his own thoughts, his own ideas, his own actions. And he ended up having trouble. You know, he would have, uh, as I said, he would have come out, you know, when he came back to the dry land, he would have hunger. He would have just, reach out to get anything that he can see that can, he can actually see for him, uh, himself to eat talking about food he would have been scraping up all over the place trying to get himself back in track but the lord brought him back to life because of what he did uh, god knew that uh, god god can see that uh, mankind man man ways is always going to fail Man's ways is always going to fail. Their thoughts, their actions is always going to fail. You know, talking about the actions, you know, the actions come from the motivation. If we are motivated by God through the Holy Spirit, we won't have any trouble like Jonah. We won't have any trouble like people like Pharaoh. We won't have any trouble like that. You know, and, um, and uh, the, thing, the thing with our brain, there's a little data in our brain. 
You know, you can only install uh, in this brain about limited files. You can overload them. Our brain is limited, it's small. We can only take necessary and limited files. Once it's full, it's full. You cannot overfull it. Because when you overfull your brain, you crash the things of this life, the things we concern about. We gotta put food on the table, we gotta go to work, we gotta earn more, you know, uh, we gotta do this, we gotta do that. Yes, it's a, it's, it's a normal thing that we do, but sometimes people worry too much. Some, sometimes we can worry about a little small matter, a small tiny thing, but whatever it is can bring you a huge impact. And then eventually you don't have a good night's sleep. You're thinking over it, you're sleeping toss to and toss to and fro overnight, thinking about something. It helps work, it helps a lot of files that you've got to sort it out of the next day. Perhaps they're now talking about reducing your, your cost of your work. Perhaps you're told we're going to be out of work. We don't want you to work anymore for us. Now, perhaps you're in pain from now and again. These things, you know, they can trouble us. They can trouble you. But you know what is right for you to do in the eyes of God, that you have to serve the Lord. You've got to use the Holy Spirit like Trinity. John acknowledged that what his action was wrong. And the only answer to all these things that we go through in life, folks, is prayer. You've got to pray. You've got to pray to God honestly. You know, you've got to fasten your seatbelt and pray to God. You've got to allow, you know, the Holy Spirit to give you peace and rest in your soul. You know, when, uh, like Jonah did. And uh, we go to the book of... Uh, Second Samuel, story of David. Um, it's quite fascinating to actually look in some of these stories here. There's, you know, there's hundreds of them. There's hundreds of story. Um, King uh, Hezekiah, he also had time of trouble. And he wasn't having a good night's sleep at all as well. And there was a time where the prophet said to him, put your house in order. So there is a lot of stories that we can actually identify as well, but I think it's not just necessarily to do with men, but it's also included with women, you know, young adults, I know what's right and wrong, because young adults can also have sleepless nights. They can also be troubled from now and again, perhaps from school. Perhaps uh, somebody has been picking on you in school. And, uh, you know, the only weapon to all of this is just pray about it. It's just a, a, a great um, thing to do, it defends us, it defends our faith. It's actually the shield uh, that when you pray about this to God, because God never fails us, He will fight our battles. And second Samuel, we're talking about uh, Hezekiah, um, very rich man Hezekiah, and uh, but the thing with uh, governing something, it comes with great responsibility. The king of Israel and perhaps like leaders of this world, it comes with great responsibility. Uh, but um, guess what? It comes also with trouble. There is also, there is, all, there is always things in, in people's uh, mind, uh, thinking about stuff, worrying about stuff and how they can actually manage for themselves. And that's the world we live in, folks, you know. And here, um, King David uh, went through something. Now, this is quite a um, great story in the, in, in the Old Testament. King David, uh, actually, you've probably heard it before, but um, he committed uh, adultery, adultery with uh, Bathsheba. And, um, and obviously, uh, the Lord uh, smite the child. Uh, before he was born, because of what David did. We'll pick it up a couple of verses here. Verse 12. Second uh, Samuel chapter 12. We'll pick it up in verse 12. He says, Well, thou did it secretly. Uh, 
uh, speaking to David, he said, but I will do this thing before all, all Israel and before the sun. And David said unto Nathan the prophet, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, the Lord also put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. How be it because of his deeds thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to bless the queen. As a child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. And Nathan departed unto his house. And the Lord struck the child. And Uriah's wife bare unto David, and he was very sick. David therefore uh, besought God for the child, and David fastened and went in and lay all night upon the earth. That's what David did. And David, um, we know that uh, he, he, had, he actually gone through something very painful. And, uh, you know, the things that he, he would have actually, he, he could he couldn't handle anything uh, properly. Perhaps the role as a king, he couldn't, you know, handle things wisely. Things was all over the self because things. There was something was driving him. There was a different type of file in the data. He was actually leading his natural thoughts. He was taking away his focus, taking away his his plan, his, his uh, what he should be doing. He was actually out of action. So the whole thing stopped him to be in action, uh, you know, to be in action uh, for the Lord. The whole thing. He would just keep crushing down. He was just damaging himself. And then in the end, he repented. But it doesn't mean that the child come back to life. Whatever God have actually spoken, it will be happened. The life of the child will be taken because God is still going to be God. And poor old David, and he was just keeping his head down. Perhaps he feel embarrassed on the time. He would have, uh, he would have uh, uh, tried to do his very best. He actually goes on to say he tried to convince God. But deep within his heart, he knew what he has to do. You know, and I think, and I think one of the best, one of the things that we, that we have to actually remind ourselves is forgiveness. He eventually did to be what he did before the Lord, through the prophet uh, in a nation. But on that very moment, the things that he went through, he would have couldn't be sleep overnight, thinking about stuff. You know, he talks about that he couldn't actually eat at all. You know, and I reckon, in, you know, in our walk in the Lord, you know, if we cross something, or perhaps if we do something, or if something that we might think that we, you know, we've, uh, we're trying to get away with something or think that um, it's going to be okay. Somebody mentioned about the other day about forgiveness. I think it was Eugene, in maybe chapter 18. The thing with forgiveness is... Um, if you, uh, if you actually say something or done something and you've been advised uh, through the word of God what you must do to get back your foot in track, you know, the Bible talks about you've got to go to your brother. You've got to forgive your brother. But I think a lot of people, and I certainly believe that a lot of people are actually avoiding that. They go to God and ask God to forgive what he did for his brother. Or his sister. It doesn't work like that. David was in a similar situation. He was in a similar situation. And the child did die. You know, you've got to forgive your brother. You've got to face to face your brother and tell him how sorry you are. Likewise, your sister. You cannot take shortcuts. Because otherwise, life is still going to be painful. You're going to be hobbling along all the way through in your walk in the Lord. This life is just going to be restless all the way through. And uh, it's, not, it's not very a nice place to be, isn't it? Not very, very nice place to be. You've got to follow, you've got to, you've got to follow the chain of command. And uh, the terms and conditions is what the Bible says. And we've got to do it right. Because otherwise, life is just going to be messy. And um, 
if we go to another scripture, Second uh, Corinthians chapter 11. Second Corinthians chapter 11, the life of Paul the Apostle. Um, Paul the Apostle is a well-known, one of the well-known person in the Bible, and we can actually track his, um, you know, uh, look back to the history of his life. And, uh, he was a Jew, he, uh, very, you know, the law back, you know, right from the beginning to the end. He was actually a famous person in the, in the Jewish uh, tradition. Uh, Paul the Apostle, he, very well-known person, and uh, he was uh, taught by a guy called uh, Gamaliel, whatever his name was, I think it was right, but, um, he, you know, he knew the law, you know, everything, and uh, he's, uh, he's, he's pretty much sticking to the law, and uh, we know that uh, his life got converted, wasn't he? You see the story of Acts chapter 8 on his way to Damascus, and uh, tried to... Uh, put too much, you know, a lot of pressure to the church, to the early Christians, and throw them in prison, and beating them up, and so on. And uh, in the end, he met Christ. You know, Christ appeared unto him, and he led him to go to a person called Ananias, and he got baptized in spirit filled. He became bright. He was a different man, and he was stand up for Christ all the way through his ministry. And uh, he also had some sleepless night as well, by the way, called the Apostle. But the sleepless night that he had when he threw out his walk in the Lord was nothing to do with the natural things. Nothing to do with him trying to achieve his work as a pen maker. He wasn't worried about putting food on the table. He wasn't worried about uh, uh, how can I, you know, how, how can I get all these people into the car or or things like that, or the natural things, the expenses and the things that goes together with it for the, for the fellowship as part of this ministry. You know, his main aim, his goal was salvation, was the gospel that the church has to establish and, uh, and, and have a really good foundation of the gospel to make sure that their salvation is secure. The gospel has to be secure. That was his aim. He risked his life outside that because of the gospel. He protected the gospel because the future of the fellowship has to continue going on and on and on and on until Christ comes back. That's why we're still here today. We have to keep the gospel. You know, any other things that you go around in our life, you can put that aside. That's just a small trial and tribulation here and there. But the greatest is, is, is going to happen when Jesus comes back. That's what really matters. And uh, we see here in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Um, Paul the Apostles, uh, we pick it up in verse, uh, verse 12. Uh, sorry, not verse 12. Um, where was it? Um, In verse 23, he says, Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. Am I more labors, more abundant? In stripes, more measures. In prison, more fre frequent. In, uh, in of deaths, often. Of the Jews, five times received by forty stripes, save one. Thrice I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I was suffered, shipwrecked. Night and day I have been in the deep. In journeying often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers. In perils of my countrymen, in perils of my even, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness, in painfulness, in watching often, in hunger, in thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness. Beside those things that are without, that we should come upon me daily to care of all the churches. So that's the life of Paul. It's very clearly here of what the life of this particular saint, a brother in the Lord, of what he can through, that his main aim is to protect the gospel, is to make sure that saints has to be established in the one faith, not to get tossed to and fro with the cares of his life. Because the cares of this life, what does it bring? It brings damage. 
it brings division. It brings separation. Because the time the cares of this life choke up or take up our life, it leads us astray. No wonder why, you know, like we live in a world now, there is a lot of people worrying about so many things, a lot of you know, anxiety. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's very clear in the scriptures that, um, you know, uh, some of these examples we just read, you know, to, to actually have a great life in the Lord and to have a, uh, um, um, uh, perhaps a, a very peaceful life in the Lord, to be at peace and joyful in the Lord, is to walk in the Spirit. You know, when, when we talk about walking the Spirit, it's not just a, a mixture of things. It's 100% committed walking on in the Spirit. You know, you've got to be led by the Spirit. You've got to use the Spirit. In every aspect of our life, day in, day out, we've got to allow the Holy Spirit. You know, because we live in a world now that we we are under pressure, not from the gospel, not from God, we are under pressure by the things that is coming along alongside us. You know, we can be pressurized from work, we can be pressurized from our families, even perhaps our children. You know, the pressure comes in all sorts of angles. Your boss at work, maybe your best friend, anything. If you're driving a car, if you own a car, and then the car broke down, the car is putting you too much pressure to actually try to fix it. You know, if you're renting a, if, if you own a house, you know, your belongings are putting you too much pressure. You know, if you receive, you, you know, if you receive a bill, you know, one day and you, not imagine that might be the cost of the bill you might have to pay. You know, it puts you sleepless night. It worries you a lot. So everything that we got in our hand is, put, is actually putting us under pressure. Because you've got to pay the bills. You've got to go to work. It's a very pressure life. I wonder why a lot of people have got depression and anxiety. People stress out. People hide in their cave. They don't want to show themselves up. They don't want to stood up for their right. Because the world we live in is like that. Paul the Apostle have actually gone through even worse because he wants to protect the gospel. He wants to make sure that saints have to be strong in faith, no matter whatever comes against them. Whatever, how big and how what sort of size has come against them, because because our brain, our natural thinking, and our natural thought, everything that's dwelling in our mind, is just, it's not, it's not what we can see, but we can, you know, what we can read in the Bible. But the time you actually use the mind of Christ, you press in towards the mark, that's where you get the victory from. You know, you will see that life is just going to fly, it's like flying like an eagle. Life is like that. Your life will be flying like an eagle. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about that life will be perfect. Life will be great. Because God has actually already said to us, like he said to Abraham, that he shall make us great. If you're walking on in the spirit, and if you focus, you aim on one aim, you aim on one goal, and you keep your hands on the plow, you keep your hands on the field, walking on in the spirit, working with God, that's what matters. Everything that goes on around about us, it doesn't matter at all in the eyes of God. It just brings a lot of destruction. And um, eventually people can be lost in the wild. You know, when, um, uh, we will be troubled from now and again. We will have sleepless night from now and again. Whether it's something to do with the natural body or something that we might hear, or perhaps being as a saint, we might get offended, we might disagree with something, or perhaps something is going on in our mind, something in the past, perhaps, we still have a questions about it, or anything at all. It'll make you sleepless night. It keep boiling over you. Jonah has to put it all that out. There is no need for that in the, you know, in, in, uh, you know, in the kingdom of God. Your temple is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Keep it holy. Anything is not unholy, put it, you know, put it aside. Because it's just going to drain your life away. 
this morning I had a mechanic turns up and uh, he was actually fixing my van because uh, he was actually a mobile mechanic and uh, he fixed it the other day and uh, and then I noticed the, the things that he fixed is still uh, leaking, you know, the coolant is still leaking and uh, taxi him again, he pops up again. He's a nice fellow, he lives down the road, his name is Dan and uh, uh, I've been uh, witnessing to him and gave him a leaflet. I think it was uh, the, the, the previous time he came and, and he knows that today is Sunday, we're going to be having a meeting. Anyway, the other day I sent him a message about, uh, about uh, the van is still leaking. And he turns up this morning and he said, you know what, last night I couldn't sleep. I've been thinking about this. And I said, okay, there we go. You know? And uh, there is no need to worry about this life. You know, if you get a big bill from the post or something, don't start uh, taking your house down and worry too much about it and try to sell your belongings to cover the cost of the bill. You know, don't need to do that. The only thing is to pray. Prayer is the only weapon. You know, nobody beats prayer. Nobody beats prayer, you know? We finish off in Philippians chapter... Four. Philippians chapter four. Finish off with this scripture here. Um, very well known scriptures. The Bible is also promise uh, that uh, we are made to be in good health. You know, we, we, we are created to be in good health uh, because of the, uh, the things that uh, now we eat and, you know, the things that we drink and we eat and, and life becomes to be very um, busy and, you know, we, we, uh, we're taking too much of the world and we we're allowing the pressure of this world technology that comes in and, and um, it, uh, it, it leads to all sorts of things in life. You know, it, it, it brings a lot of um, a speed, if you like. Life becomes very fast, you know, and uh, it leads to sicknesses, so. It leads to sicknesses. You know, it, it, uh, it, it brings in a lot of things, but... Um, um, it's, it, it's always good to, to be wise how to handle things, uh, how to monitor things. Because, um, you know, our brain um, is, cannot actually take a huge amount of files. You've got to limit it what you allow in your brain. You know, you, you've got the mind of Christ now in control. You've got to stand for that. And uh, don't think too much about other things. Because we don't even know what's happening tomorrow. Live it to the day. You know, in Sacy and Philippians chapter 4, um, pick it up in verse uh, 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, and thanks give a letter or request be known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall be keep your hearts and mind through Jesus Christ. And all the people say, This is this is this is the focus. This is what Paul the Apostle, part of his testimony, he wrote to this church. This is what he got to do, folks. You know, base your life on this. You know, focus on this. Focus on the work. Focus on the fellowship. Focus on the things of God. Don't let anything else take control over your thoughts, your thinking, your attention. Just let those things aside. Yes, God is aware that we need to work. Put food on the table. He awares of all that. But by the way, another part of the scriptures is talks about all those things of vanity. So throughout the Bible, what God is, is actually saying, you've got to get the right balance. You've got to have your house in place, in order, like Hezekiah was actually advised by outside the prophet. You've got to get everything in place, not just a family or a household, but also include single people. If you are married or married or children, you've got to get your house in order. Get your plan in place. Put God as the number one plan. Anything else comes second. Then you will see you won't have any sickness now. Um, 
in verse uh, 7, and the peace of God will pass all understanding to keep your hearts to Jesus Christ. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lively, whatsoever things of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on this thing, those things which are birth and long and received and heard and seen in me, do and God, uh, um, uh, God of peace shall be with you. It's just a scriptures to update our data, isn't it? To update our data, get rid of the old stuff. Allow Philippians chapter four, verse five to eight. Install them. Install them in our life. You know, let uh, you know, let uh, let that these scriptures be the driving uh, the driving force. You know, to control our whole life. One last scripture to finish off. Maybe chapter six. Notice chapter six. Um, maybe chapter six. Well, on scripture talks about it here. Verse 32, uh, verse 31, it says, Therefore, no thought uh, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? Be clothed. For after these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father know that you have need of these things. So Jesus, Jesus knows, God knows that we don't really chase up. We don't need those things because we are now Christian. We are another child of God. There is no need to chase after those things. The more we chase after those things, it brings problems to us. It's just it's just replace your attention. You know, it leads you to uh, your life becomes dysfunctional. And obviously you become to be a bad testimony. And he says here, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Take not therefore no thoughts for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall be taken thought of the things of itself. Sufficient is the day is the evil thereof. So that is the promise and um, the wonderful promise and we still very much stand on these promises, and we must never forget it. Philippians chapter 4, Matthew chapter 6, you know, Luke chapter 24, many other scriptures about life and uh, how we look after our salvation and not to get too destructive to things uh, that is around us. We know that uh, the victory belongs to God. He's the only one who can give us victory through His Son, Jesus Christ. When we going through something, Prayer is the weapon you know, of it. Prayer works. Prayer brings revelation. Prayer is powerful. It brings healing to our bodies. It takes away anything that is actually going on inside our heart, in our life. You know, because Jesus has actually promised that way. He doesn't want us to suffer. He wants us to be at peace. You know, and all the people say, Amen.